Welcome to this uh, video tutorial where we are going to cover uh, the relationship between grasshopper, rhino, and rhino can. Okay, so I'm going to show you really quickly the grasshopper definition in order to understand what you need to do. The idea is that I have a panel uh that is uh with a specific size that i'm going to show you right now i'm not going to show you all the grasshopper definition because we need some time in order to do that but i hope that you can understand the basic idea so here i see that i have a a, a box a rectangle here that i'm going to extrude this rectangle 50 millimeters so let's see the, the box so this is the box that I have. If I try to uh, select this here in order to use this, like my stock to Rhinocan, I cannot do it because this geometry belongs to uh, Grasshopper. So first idea is that we need to build here your layers previously because I need to bake the geometry according to the layer that my task later in the rhino can will be easier to do right so the tricky is that okay i go here to my box stock i right click and then i bake in the right layer in this case i want to bake the geometry to this layer the stock so now i can hide here i don't see i disable the previsualization here and then I have here my stock. So now I can hide my stock here in Rhino, right? What else we need to do here? So now, also I did here previously, just to show you, we have here some dimensions. So this is the, the size of my uh, panel, okay? 500 per 500 per 50. So the idea here in terms of design is that I have some squares right that i'm going to show you right now in order to see less things that is something that will be good for us is that i'm going to open right now uh to see sorry the this boundary uh let's see before this information so if i if i go and see this like the top view i can control here the I see the control, the attractor point is this coordinate that's at the center of my uh, panel. If I change here, is the idea of the parametric design. If I change here the coordinates here, I'm going to see uh, all the results, right? So I see now a different panel, okay? Because this is parametric. So let's go back to the center of my. Uh, of my square is exactly at the center right so that's okay i see here a new result so what i need to do with this geometry this is the attractor uh point definition is this one i need to remap i need to do some buildings here before but let's see here uh the and then and then also i can move then because I want also to see different depth. So I see now that I have some geometry that let me uh, hide this, otherwise it will be a little bit confusing for you. Okay. So I see now, sorry, this one. I don't want to see, but I want to see this one. So we see here that if I show you in the front view, I see here different uh, uh, heights. It's the idea of the design, right? And then we can create a surface from this geometry. So let's see now the surface. So now I can hide this one, otherwise it will be difficult, right? So I, I need these surfaces also to Rhinocan. So I go here in the definition of my battery. And then I right click and I bake. This is the most important thing in this uh, uh, video, okay? I need to bake 
to the right layer that is this one surface because i will need to use this geometry in rhinocon later so i prepare everything right so now if i go here i can also hide the surface and then i can uh, disable the previsualization in uh, grasshopper and the last thing is the solid difference right if i see i have some uh, then after i did my surface i extrude must be um uh, this is the value right everything here like i told you is parametric you can change everything okay so now it's time to bake this to the right layer that i did previously that is solid for hr that means horizontal roughing so i know previously the strategies that i need to use here right and i press ok so i have right now everything that i need from grasshopper is in rhino right now so now maybe i can uh in order because i'm using just one monitor for you right i can minimize here i can maximize my my rhino because now it's time to start to use rhino i did here previously a couple of uh, tools that i i am going i'm going to to use in this uh, specific uh, job this is one and this is the other one, it's a Vimeo, right? So here in RhinoCan, we can control the tool, the angle, the length, the height, the fits and speeds, the position of my uh, tool in my, uh, in my uh, router, right? Okay. So now, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do here is to say, so it's important, I'm going to um, to see the stock. This is my stock. I'm going to uh, to hide also the dimensions, right? And then my stock that is this one, this poly surface. I go to the stock and I say uh, stock from selection, right? So if I see now my 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 stock box stock is 500 per 500 per 50 is the height, okay? And now I see here the my WCS is in the same position like my uh, C plane origin in Rhino. Sorry, in Rhino. So if I want, I can change this if it's necessary. It's not this case. Also, sometimes we need to align our stock according <clears throat> to the. So my stock right now must be in the southwest, northwest is northwest, right? Is northwest. So okay. So now, and then now I can uh, turn off my layer here. And now it's time to start to establish the, the strategies, okay? So um, also, it's not necessarily to use everything in Grasshopper. I see here that I have some, uh, I'm going to hide my um, solid for HR. And I see here some, uh, some drills that I want to do, okay? So I have here these points that I did then in rhino in this case previously so now let's do do our hole right with the drill i want to select the the tool that i want to use here sorry first of all we need to select the geometric the tricky here also is that i can select things from layer right so now i generate I see these buttons here uh, allow me to to hide or not the the toolpath, right? And then now, if you are not happy with the the strategy, 
So you see here that I'm using standard drill. In this case, I want to use a depth drill. And my depth, because this is in 2D, I want my depth to be, let's say, uh, 20. Okay. And I want to do this in step increment. I put here 4. I can generate. And then we can also change the sorting, right? So let's use a minimum distance sort. So now I see another type of organization. Probably I can go this uh, faster. Uh, we can uh, see also with the simulation, right? We can simulate. And here we see the effect. We figured out that I use it here, the Vimeo 33 is the name, but it's wrong. I want to use this drill, right? So every time. So uh, the, the RhinoCon is also parametric. Yes, because we can change the, the values. In the simulation, sometimes I want to see the simulation with more detail. So we can come here in the simulation tab and then let's see the simulation really, really slow because I want to see this with a lot of a detail. So this is the depth drill. You see that the, the drill is uh, going down in different steps okay okay so we finish the i'm going to close this uh dialog box and then we can go back to the simulation and then i'm going to put here more zeros because i want to go faster right now right i don't need to see this with it i go to my perspective so we did here our first uh, uh the strategy is done. Is that standard drill? I can change also the name of the job, right? Okay, this is my panel, and the standard drill. I can keep this name, or I can change. So now the standard drill is done. So I can hide the information, the layer. I go back to the program. Let's see now the um, the solids for hr for horizontal roughing right so now i need to go to machining options machine operations and then i go to a 3d that is the horizontal roughing now i'm going to configure this strategy the two that i want is this one speeds and speeds they are right i did this before in the two the control geometry, mm, yes, we can do, uh, we can select a curve that also I did here previously. We can, we need to prepare everything, right? I have here a square that I'm going to select right now. So you see here that my strategy now will uh, work exactly from this square to inside, okay? Cut levels, okay, let's divide this with the distance every five millimeters is the, the step we see here, the graph here. I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, in cut parameters, let's put the stock zero, okay, in this case. And also my step over could be 50%, right? So we can generate. We generate the strategy. No? So now it's generating all the tool path. Okay. Again, <clears throat> every time that I do, uh, uh, I apply some strategy, I recommend you to do the simulation. So we see here what the simulation is doing. Because sometimes we did a mistake. In this case, it's uh, absolutely right. Okay. So now I have my horizontal roughing, and we did previously the standard drill, the horizontal roughing. Let's go now to the next step. Everything, some parts of this work, they are coming from Grasshopper, like I showed you before. So now I want to apply um, a finishing, right? That could be a pocketing that I want. Here I can uh, remove all because it's still selected. I'm going to select some surfaces boundary. Then I go to my surface that I did previously in Grasshopper. Then I bake it to the right layer. And then I select the objects and I press Enter. 
right? And then I generate. So now I am doing here my uh, finishing, right? So now let's be sure that everything is, uh, my stock now will be zero because I want to, to, to clean my, the bottom. The step over could be 75%. It depends on the material that you are going to use, okay? The sorting, let's use the minimum distance sort again. So now the organization is better, right? And now let's do our uh, simulation, okay? Okay, then we can hide here the toolpath uh, visibility so we see the, uh, the result, right? And finally, we can do the engravings. Uh, the engravings, I forgot to do something Grasshopper, so I can go back to, to Grasshopper. And here, I have here, let's see, I need to go to program. I need to see my layers again. So I need to organize here my, my screen, right? My monitor is really tight. Normally I use uh, two or sometimes three monitors because things start to be really, really tight, okay? But uh, I have a curve that's here, curves for engraving, yes. And my curve for engraving is here that I did here in Rhino, okay? So in order to avoid too many things on the screen again, I want to uh, turn off this layer, turn off this layer also, turn off this layer also, right? Also I can turn off the stock visibility, I can go to my panel, right? And then let's see where is my curve. I was, uh, it was uh, hidden, right? So this is the curve. The curve is the right layer. So now I need to go to my grasshopper definition and I need to uh, set this curve. And automatically I'm doing here a linear array and the result of this linear array, I'm rotating, right? And then I have my here geometry. So then right click here again, and then I bake to the right layer that is curved from, from engraved, okay? So now we can uh, hide the curve that I, I used it before. And then we go to machining uh, uh, operations to um, engraving. I select my curves that uh, I can select right now direct here. So I see that I have 12 curves, six, per, six plus six. The sorting, you can do the sorting right now. I just save, when you save, you don't generate, right? And I go to parameters to check. <laughs> These are 3D curves. So it's at the top, everything is okay. If I need to change the entry exit, in this case, I don't need to change. We can see here before, so we generate, right? And then the engraving, I'm going to use this bit, right? So we need to be sure that the bits are, are okay. Let's see here, it's okay, it's okay. Just the engraving I want to do. And then also the engraving, maybe I can do the engraving before everything. So let's now do, <coughs> sorry, um, simulation. Yes. So then, we can see exactly what we are going to get at the end. So now I don't need to use my grasshopper. I can maximize my rhino, so I have more space to work. <coughs> and this is everything, right? So let's check the, the information. So to do the engraving, two minutes and something, standard drill, two minutes something, the horizontal roughing, 11 minutes and the pocketing is three minutes so i can do this panel in uh, uh 20 minutes uh sometimes also it's important to do a shop documentation that i want a html file not a excel file so now we are going rhino is going to generate 
a really uh, nice uh, HTML for us. Okay, so I see here the name of the file, the date, the units, my stock dimension, time consuming, right? The tools that I want to use. Let me put this a little bit bigger. Okay. Right. Nice. Everything is uh, controlled. And then we need to, uh, okay, now it's time to post. I need to post the engraving. Let's put here inside this folder. Okay, this is the engraving. Here I need to choose the, the machine that I'm, I'm going to use. Let's uh, post this with a match three that's uh, really uh, popular. Where is Dolly? It's here. Match three. So I post. So this is my my G code. And then I can post these three ones together because I'm going to use the same uh, bit. So I post them. Also with the uh, match three. Match three millimeter. Okay. Here you can choose the you can change later the the type and this the let's say the this is with the flat wheel right that ten millimeters doesn't matter the name okay and I post and then here we see our our post so. I hope that you could understand the the general idea of the of this video is just how we can link the information that is coming from uh, Grasshopper to Rhino and then to RhinoCAM. The most important thing here, of course, is how we can organize the layers, right? So this will be my my panel. And this is what I have for you today. Thanks for watching this video. If you have some uh, comments, you can write us and then we are going to answer you. Also, if you want, I can send you both files, the Grasshopper definition and also the, the Rhino file. Okay.